How's everyone doing today? Um, this is the Banker Next Door podcast. I am your host, Dr. Joe Berquist. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Christmas weekend. Uh, I'm coming to you on this lovely Christmas Eve. And I am uh, rocking my little ugly, uh, ugly, ugly sweater here. I'll kind of stand up slowly so everybody can get a get a glimpse of this magic little 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 jingle there for you. <laughs> I love it, man. I love the love the ugly sweaters and ugly sweater contests. But uh, um, and and for the podcast audience, so yeah, I'm rocking an ugly sweater, basically with a goat that has uh, little little bells on it that uh, jingle when you move. So uh, <laughs> just for sure entertainment value. But um, uh, today I wanted to talk to everybody about interest rates here a little bit and and talk about kind of where things have, have ended the year. So I wanted to start off by going over to one of my favorite sources, the Fred uh, Economic Database, which is on the St. Louis Federal Reserve website. And uh, so here's a chart of the federal funds rate. So the Federal Reserve uh, the, what's called the FOMC, the Federal Open Markets Committee. Uh, they are the group within the Fed that controls interest rates and particularly the, what's called the federal funds rate. And so that's the chart that we're looking at here. We're looking at a chart from the Fed. And basically, I wanted to look at a couple of things. We're going we're gonna to look at the last year. But first, I wanted to open it up and I wanted to look at kind of what was going on over the last, say, you know, 20 year plus period. So you can see here, the chart here, we, we basically start back in January of 2001, and we go all the way up to present day. And I just wanted to give people a flavor for where, so the, the federal funds rate right now is in a, you know, federal funds rates always in a range of uh, 25 basis points. So right now that range is 5.25 to five and a half percent. And We'll talk about how that affects other interest rates uh, in like the 30 year mortgage in, in a second. So uh, but here I just wanted to give people an inclination when they're looking at this that you can see the last time rates were this high. You have to go all the way back to the 2006 to uh, 2007 period here. And the, the gray bars on the chart here are recessionary periods. So in, uh, in 2000, 2001, that was the dot-com bubble bursting. Uh, and then right here, obviously from, from 2007, 2008, 2009, that was the, uh, the Great Recession uh, that, that hit the US. And so it was, it was right before this period, I'm trying to chart here, so basically August, uh, August of 2007, obviously September of 2007 is when all of the the uh, proverbial um, stuff hit the fan, as it were. So uh, in 2007, basically the, the Federal Reserve decreased the federal funds rate all the way down to zero, uh, which it hit basically in uh, December of 2008. And it remained at zero all the way until December of... Uh, I think it was December of 2015 it was the first time they did. And they just did a quarter point rate hike in December 15. And they started to hike rates back up. Uh, but then you got to about uh, uh, July of 2019. And then the feds brought rates all the way back down to zero. Then you had, of course, the pandemic hit in March of uh, 2020. And uh, they brought the rates all the way back down to zero at that point. And they stayed there for a couple of years until 2022 and then basically proceeded their their march up. So so obviously, and and people know this, I mean, people have been watching interest rates here as they have moved throughout the year. So the interest rates going up is is nothing new. It's not shocking anybody. I just wanted to point out that we've had a period, a very unnatural period of, you know, zero percent interest rate environment. Uh, what the Federal Reserve has called the ZERP, the zero interest rate, um, is that zero interest rate pricing environment? Or so, um, and, you know, as a result of that, it has changed so many things in our economy. Uh, but I think very importantly, it's changed psychologically how people look at interest rates and their perceptions of, of value and homes and, and cars and, and just everything in general. Um, and if you're, and I think the difficult thing is like, if you're 30 years old or younger, uh, you don't really understand this. Like you don't really have a perception of this. Uh, people who are over 30, people who are 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, um, they've seen interest rates much higher. They've dealt with a, a, with what I would call a more normal interest rate environment. And one of the very key things to understand here 
with interest rates being at this point. So there were two key things that happened in this zero interest rate environment. Number one was that debt became very cheap. So companies went very, very big on their debt. And then number two was that you took out what was called the risk-free rate. You pay, they pay, the Fed basically removed the risk-free rate out of the market. Now, what is the risk-free rate? The risk-free rate is an investment that you can make and earn a return with 0% risk. In other words, a CD in a bank, uh, maybe buying a treasury bond or buying an I bond or a series, series EE savings bond, something of, of that nature. But say, um, as we're seeing right now, you know, you could go, go into a bank and get a CD at 5% and there's zero risk. You know, you, you take that out for nine months, 12 months, whatever. At the end of that point, you made 5%. And now if you want to roll it over into the next CD, you can do that. Or if you want to buy a um, series I bond and you got 6% on that, then and you leave it in there for three or four years. Hey, that's great. At the end of three or four years, you got your 6% and you're good. That's what's called the risk-free rate. And the risk-free rate uh, really benefits retirees. It benefits savers, people who like saving their money, like trying to accumulate their money, hopefully retire for retirement one day, right? Um, so the the Fed did a what I would consider a very unnatural thing over this, you know, 15 year period of time where they basically removed the risk free rate. And now that risk free rate has been reintroduced into the market. And people have finally been able to earn a somewhat of a return on their money for the first time in a very, very long time. Like I when I was a kid in the 80s, uh, you know, like I would remember my grandparents talking about how they would go to the bank and they'd get a CD. Literally, the CD would be paying 15 percent interest. Um, can you imagine getting a one year CD with a 15% interest rate? I mean, you know, incredible, right? So, uh, but those were the stories that like, you know, my grandparents and parents would tell. And so it was a very, uh, you know, I kind of grew up in a, in a, in a more, what I would call normal interest rate environment where again, your, your, your mortgage rate probably fluctuated somewhere between seven and 10%. And if you could look back historically over say a 50, 60 year period, you know, interest rates, you know, on, on, um, you know, your 30 year mortgage are going to stay in that, um, you know, probably about seven to eight uh, percent, you know, bandwidth, so to speak. So so that's a pretty normal rate. But unfortunately, over the last few years, I mean, you know, people have gotten psychologically geared to having you know, three and a half, four percent interest rate, four and a half percent interest rate. And that's had a very real effect on housing values. And like I said, the value of cars, the value, value of everything. And now we are out of that. But you know, what just happened last week? Well, the, well, the federal, you know, um, Jeremy Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, he just came out and basically said, hey, pretty much going to stop increasing interest rates. We're going to put a hold on that. We think we've kind of defeated, defeated inflation. And now we're going to potentially look to reduce interest rates. Now, Wall Street kind of went, they went nuts. They went on this big bonanza uh, market shot up the last week or so. And, uh, you know, now Wall Street is, has this expectation there's going to be major rate cuts. Um, well, I and I would make the argument that, you know, I would make the argument that the Federal Reserve should not cut interest rates because we, we want to maintain this risk free rate in the market. We want to return the market to more of a normal operating standard that we've just got a glimpse of this year and we haven't seen for a long time now. But what does that mean? That means, unfortunately, a lot of short term pain for people and companies as as they kind of adjust to this new interest rate uh, error, uh, which, again, is, in my opinion, is, is a return more to to normalcy. But but and I'll, and I'll talk about that more in future episodes. But let's um, let's go in here for a second. I just want to let's return this back to say 2020 and we'll go January 1st. Okay. So here now I've adjusted the chart here and we could see here and I just wanted to show that basically so starting in in March of 2022 the Federal Reserve increased interest rates 12 times up to our current range of basically 5 and a half 5 and a 5 and a quarter 5.25 to 5 and a half percent. So now let's go over and see how is this affecting rates. So this is the Wall Street Journal website uh, this is their uh, finance, their data markets uh, section of the website, which is fantastic if anybody has, has not gone here before. So you have a couple things here. You have the U.S. Treasuries. You have the yield, little yield curve analysis here, and I'm going to get into that in the next episode of the yield curve. Uh, and then we have our rates. So let's see, well, where where's all the rates at right now? So we have a federal funds rate, again, like I said, 5.25, 5.5, and the Wall Street Journal prime rate 
at eight and a half percent. Now the prime rate is a very important rate. A lot of things in banking run off of the prime rate and the prime rate is always going to be three percent above whatever the federal funds rate is. So we can see here that's at five and a half. So therefore the Wall Street Journal prime rate is at eight and a half. Um, then you have what's called the, the SOFR, the secure overnight financing rate, and uh, that replaced LIBOR. Uh, that we'll talk about that in another episode. Uh, but that stands at 5.31%. A typical five-year CD is at 2.83. Uh, the 30-year mortgage rate's at 7.14, which came down from a high of 8.28. 15-year mortgage is at 6.42. The jumbo mortgage is at 7.21. Uh, five-year, five-year adjustable rates hovering around 6.47. And then basically a new car loan for a 48-month car loan is at 7.69%. Um, now, obviously this has led to a lot of problems right now. Um, homes are the most unaffordable that they have been in 20 years. Uh, you've seen the, the, the Apple, you know, from the, from the mortgage bankers association, the, the number of loan applications has dramatically plunged because obviously, you know, people, most people can't afford to buy homes at this, at this rate. And you've, you've also seen an issue with cars. You know, I think, I then I think I've still seen some deals out there where cars are running stuff at like, you know, 1.9%, uh, APR financing if you buy a new car and stuff like that. But if you're buying a used car, uh, you know, rates are still, you know, rates are, are very high. And that puts, that puts, a, uh, that makes the affordability of cars, you know, very, very difficult. Um, so we see here where interest rates are standing right now. And we go up now. I want to talk for a second here just about the, the tr U.S. Treasury. So the U.S. Treasuries, in particular, the 10-year note. Now, the 10-year note is, is the most important note that you should be paying attention to because that is what drives so much of the rates that you see in your life, especially like the 30-year mortgage. Um, a lot of stuff is just tied to and runs off of this, this rate. And right now that, that 10 year treasury note is sitting at four and a half percent, which is down that, that rate had crossed over 5% for, for a good part of the year. And then just more recently dropped back down. Um, I need to get into a discussion of why that rate dropped back down because the, basically the, the treasury is buying short-term T-bills right now, which is, which is forcing that rate down lower below 5%. And they're they're doing that to try to you know keep things running, keep things moving. But they're having a very hard time selling the longer term bonds. Your thirty year uh, T bonds are are you know are 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 having they're just the government's just having a hard time moving these things right now. And we're going to talk about that in another episode as we get into the new year because that's a whole nother again that that itself is a whole nother discussion. But um, so you know and again just to to kind of wrap up here this discussion, I just wanted to point out kind of where interest rates were here at year end. I wanted to just point out that the, the Federal Reserve is looking at potentially easing rates next year and why I think, you know, that's a little bit of a mistake because like I said, the the Federal Reserve, they, they morphed the market for such a long period of time and they took that risk-free rate out of the market. And now that it's back, um, I think it needs to stay back. And I think we need to get back to a more kind of normal, stabilized environment, regardless of the pain that that causes in the short, short term. Beyond that, um, I don't believe that inflation has been defeated yet. And we're going to, and I'm going to talk about inflation because I'm going to give you guys some counter numbers. Uh, a company and an individual, John Williams uh, from Shadow Stats, a gentleman I followed for, for many, for almost 20 years now. Um, he is uh john is very much a contrarian he very, very much breaks down economic numbers in a way that are more befitting of what the numbers should be and before they were they've been you know adjusted the formulas for calculation of these numbers have been adjusted over over many years so uh and I, like i said so I'll, i'm going to bring in a discussion of, of that back to everybody uh you know, as we as we get into the new year here, we're going to have that discussion on inflation, unemployment, um, a lot of you know we're gonna we're gonna get into the the sale of uh, treasuries and bond notes and how that's ultimately affecting the national debt and could affect inflation going forward throughout 2024. So, but 
Uh, but that's it. That's all I got for this episode. If you guys liked what you saw, please give a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Please leave your comments below. Uh, make sure to follow us on YouTube, Rumble, and all major podcast platforms. I wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I hope everybody has wonderful holidays out there. And I look forward to seeing everybody again next week uh, when I kind of do a, a year-end wrap-up and just kind of talk about all the things I've I've covered here in my first you know four months of, of doing this. Uh, which has been great and very exciting. And uh, so, like I said, just, uh, you know, appreciate everybody. Uh, th thank you so much. And like I said, just have wonderful holidays out there. See ya.